The purpose of this video tonight is twofold. First, it explains the need for blocks on your model railroad, even if you have a command control system. Secondly, a simple wiring method for the block wiring is shown and demonstrated on this video. The wiring method will work for either two or three rail layouts, and it will work either on AC or DC as well. What is a block? A block is a section of track that has been electrically isolated from all other sections of track. In essence, each individual block is its own independent separate layout. Note, it is physically possible for a train to transfer itself between the blocks without interruption. The rails may be divided by leaving out a rail joiner, a rail pin, or physically cutting a rail, leaving a minuscule gap. The major and most critical reason for using blocks on a model railroad that has a command, control, a command control system is so that when you experience an electrical issue, please notice that I didn't say if, when you experience it, you will have the ability to trace the electrical issue much more efficiently and quickly. Searching for an electrical issue on a large layout that doesn't have blocks would be like looking for a needle in a haystack. With the invention of command control systems came the proclamation that blocks were no longer necessary. It would be much easier with far less wiring and toggle switches to maintain independent control over multiple engines on the same layout with the command system. Technically that is true and one heck of a sales pitch. The reality is it's an incredibly bad idea. The idea comes, becomes worse and worse with every foot of track you add. As I said earlier, when you experience electrical issues, you will be glad that you have blocks because you'll be able to locate the issue much more quickly by knowing what section of track to look at. I will describe to you how blocks would be wired to a simple circle of track. The circle would be electrically separated into four sections, quadrants if you will. Each one of these four quadrants in essence is its own independent layout, but yet each train is able to navigate the entire circle continuously with no issue because there are only minuscule gaps in the rails where one block begins and the other ends. In order to accomplish the electrical connections to our quadrants we will need a positive also called red and hot wire from both of our two transformers and also a negative wire also called black and ground from the transformers as well. We will also need four SPDT switches. Now, SPDT means single pull double throw, electrical toggle switches or slide switches. For years the Atlas Manufacturing Company has produced an electrical component known as the selector. The selector is nothing more than a panel of four SPDT electrical sliding switches. The far left of a selector has two inputs, one upper, one lower, each for one of the two transformers. Only the positive red hot wire is inserted into these connections. One transformer, call it A, has its positive wire attached to the upper input and the lower transformer uh, connection is fed by transformer B. The top outputs on the selector are connected to the quadrants of tracks. You can connect the first one to quadrant one, the second one to the second quadrant and so on until all four of the outputs are connected to one quadrant of the circle each. The four, so the four sliding switches on this selector will provide the capability of assigning either transformer A or B's power to any of the four blocks or by shutting off the power completely to the block. Moving any of, I'm sorry, moving any of these four switches to its upward position gives the block transformer A's power. The lowest position is for transformer B. These sliding switches may be put into the center position where power is completely shut off. If you're using multiple selectors, in order to make the wiring better organized, the use of an MTH, power, uh, MTH electric trains power distribution bar is highly recommended. And that's what you can see in these pictures here. These uh, power distribution bars for MTH are just a nice neat way to organize wires and feed them out to the various selectors on the layout. The uh, power distribution bars as you can see has a red input and a black input for a positive wire and a negative wire and the purpose is all along the row with the red 
are positive wires and you can connect one positive wire each and each one of these wires goes out to a different selector. So this particular board is hooked up to one, two, three, four, five, six different selectors. And the negatives may be attached in the same way. Note, it with a three rail system, even a two rail system, you can have a common ground. The negative wires can all be connected together. Uh, a crucial point though for two railers uh, again, you have the option, like three railers, of having a, a common ground. However, at points where your track reverses, like a reversing loop, a Y configuration of track, or a turntable, you would have to block off both rails, or less you would have a short circuit. Uh, any reversing area on a track where the polarity would change, in other words, the, at the end of a reversing loop, the positive rail would become the negative rail, and vice versa you would have a short circuit. That's why you would have to have the need to uh, separate that. Three wet rail people have the advantage because the positive rail is in the center. A general rule of thumb is to have a block be no more than 20 feet in length. Therefore, I would respectfully suggest to you that if your layout will have more than 20 feet of track total to divide it into blocks. On really large layouts, blocks are very handy to change the distribution of power around the layout should that become necessary. It's much easier and quicker to change and slide toggle switches than it is to move wires. The last thought would be uh, you can purchase single SPD T-switches versus a bank of selectors. If you do that, you can make a, a schematic drawing of your entire layout and you can put the single SPD T-switch on the section of track that it actually controls making it easier for other people to operate the layout. It's a, lot, uh, it's a lot easier to figure this out. I hope this short video may help the electrically challenged out there. If you have specific questions, uh, feel free to comment. I'm no expert, but fortunately this basic wiring scheme is not rocket science. This wiring scheme will work on a Christmas tree loop or on the largest model railroad on the planet. Now, lastly, in closing, I'll just give you a basic here. The glacier line, my basement layout, has four transformers that power the entire track. Transform, transformers A, B, C, and D, as you can see here. And the far side of the TIU, this is where the power from the transformers are fed in. The transformers are just below here where you can't see them. The other side of the selector where you see the large letters are where all the outputs are. The power distribution board, this is for transformer A, B, C, and D. And again, the positive wires here, as I have around my layout where the selectors are located, this is where these wires run, is out to each of the selectors. And if there are problems, it's just a nice, easy way to, to trace it. But I would highly recommend that you divide any layout into blocks, because unfortunately, just the reality of model railroading is the time will come when you'll be experiencing an electrical issue, and if your track is the size of a basement like mine is, and it's divided into 50 blocks, it's much easier to find the problem because I can literally go around and shut off all of the blocks and turn them on one by one until the transformer light starts flashing. And then that way I know in approximately what 20 feet of track my problem lies. So I hope this may help some of you out there. Have a good night.